computer. Okay. Hi, everyone. We're with uh, Father Raj. Uh, we try to spice it up here at question of the month. So instead of just me talking about the priesthood, why don't we talk to actual priests? And so the first one I have is, like I mentioned, Father Raj. Um, go ahead, introduce yourself, Father Raj. Um, where are you from? What city? Yeah, what's up, everybody? Um, yeah, uh, my name is Father Raj de Rivera. Um, I'm currently assigned to Sacred Heart Parish in Anderson, California. That's uh, Northern California, kind of close to Redding. Uh, but I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up in Vallejo, born in San Diego. So California boy through and through. But yeah, uh, ordained uh, for a uh, few years now. Um, but yeah, priest of the Diocese of Sacramento. Nice. Um the second question I wanted to ask you is, um, so I know that, you know, your time throughout seminary uh, was very valuable, um, but is what is one thing that has stuck with you um, through that time? And uh, could you just let people know how long is seminary uh, yeah. usually? Yeah, so uh, my program uh, was about uh, eight years, was eight years. Um, and uh, it, it varies from for from guy to guy, from diocese to diocese, because uh, depending on like what programs they want guys to do and for how long they want to do them. The basic thing is is that's required is that you have some kind of formation in philosophy before you start studying theology. And okay. so that can work out a variety of ways. Like, for instance, I, I came into uh, the seminary with um, lots lots of uh, university credits that didn't transfer. <laughs> Right? Oh, like, so I, so I was yeah. I was studying computers right and computer science and so I had lots of math and lots of oh, computer classes yeah. that, wouldn't, that wouldn't transfer so um you know a couple of my classes transferred so um I had a shorter program than a guy who would just enter the seminary straight out and, and mm. like so some most of the guys in our diocese if they do it total will be it'll be nine years for them right other play other dioceses they're, they're looking at 10 or 11 years because they add on like a spirituality year or some other oh, things wow. But yeah, so I did three years of philosophy and I did four years of theology with an internship year in the middle of my theology. So that's eight years total of formation. And so, um, yeah, it was a journey. It was, it was blessed. And then to, ask, to answer your question, um, oh gosh, like what, what was the most valuable lesson I learned in, this, in the seminary? Ooh, um, you know, I was thinking about this um, earlier and, and definitely like everything I learned about spirituality, everything I learned about theology, all those things mm -hmm. are important. I'm using them every day. I'm using them in council with other folks and, and all of that. But I, if I, if I'm being honest about what's the most valuable, like enriching life lesson that I got, I, <laughs> yeah. I think it was, um, it was like the brotherhood in the seminary, mm -hmm. right? Like that, um, we were on this journey together, like the, the you know, the, the different brothers, and we came from all kinds of uh, walks of life and from different ages and different cultural backgrounds and all that stuff, different faith stories. Um, but we were, there was a fraternitas, right? There was this community, koinonia, this, this understanding that, um, you know, we were connected, even though we were different. And, um, you know, I, and I try to bring those lessons to, to the parish now, and, and they, they continue to affect, you know, all my ministry, whether that's, um, you know, doing things with youth and young adults, or whether that's uh, at my parish council, or even my finance council, to, you know, this recognition that we're connected, that we're, mem we're members of the body of Christ, we're, we're, we're different, yes. um, we're unique, um, but we are, are united. And so I would say that I, I really appreciated uh, the level of, of fraternity, um, uh, brotherhood in the seminary and, and that lesson it, it sticks to me I, I still I'm still you know good friends with lots of the guys in the seminary I still maintain that um that fraternity with them even if it's just group text messages <laughs> sending random gifts and memes <laughs> to one another no but uh yeah. It, yeah we still we keep that we keep that sense of of friendship sense of fellowship yeah how many was in your cohort I guess or yeah <laughs> yeah no so that's a good question so I um well, that finished with me at the seminary that I was, I right. think there was, I think there may have been 14 of us, oh, wow. um, um, but studying for the Diocese of Sacramento, I was ordained with three guys, right? So okay. there okay. were three guys that got ordained with me and the Diocese of Sacramento my, the year that I got ordained a priest. Um, so depends. So in my class, when I was studying, there were guys from all kinds of dioceses, um, you know, Honolulu, um, uh, Orange, um, so all through California and then a couple other dioceses, right? So we were a mixed, okay. mixed group of guys. I see, I see. Yeah. Um, and then before you're, or like at, during your priesthood or as, before you become a priest, um, mm -hmm. did you get to choose a saint as you did for a confirmation or how does that work? 
Yeah, no, yeah, you, no <laughs> that's a good question. Like, yeah, do, you, do you take a patron before yes. the sacrament? Um, n no, not per se, but lots of guys, um, you know, they have their own devotions to different saints that um, throughout their throughout their journey in the priesthood. And, and uh, I know you wrote that question and I, I said, well, I don't have a, a priesthood saint, <laughs> yeah. right, um, right. but, but I, but I have an answer for you. I, I didn't even, I, I um, uh, so St. Therese right here. Wait, <laughs> there. Yes, there. Yes. <laughs> Saint yes, gotcha. uh, yeah there yes. you go um she um she she was she was with me on the journey the whole way right um my vocation story is kind of rooted in um journeying with her and and reading her writing she's a doctor of the church for those i know mm -hmm. we just celebrated her feast day a couple of days ago saint therese yes. and um i love her to death and she was there and she she helped affirm my vocation uh, along the way so if I had to pick up one one saint that was with me on the journey to priesthood it, it would be Therese I have lots of other patrons <laughs> yeah, um, okay. the ones that I picked up on along the way with other other sacrament with, with like confirmation stuff right so like Peter and Gabriel and uh, all, all uh, the martyrs of the of, of the faith I have strong devotions to to those guys John Paul II right mm -hmm. so um, yeah lots of lots of amazing saints that 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 journey with us you know yes i actually share uh saint gabriel with you that is oh, yeah. my patron saint yeah that's right so, yeah well, uh, happy belated feast day <laughs> yes from, uh, yes did you celebrate well the other day i did i had to play awesome. and <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah. cool. oh, i love him yeah that's the homie <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure yeah especially, i mean it's a good one for you especially you're doing this youtube stuff right so yeah you know spreading the message spreading the exactly. you know, uh, yeah. speaking good news into the world so no that's awesome Yes. Um, so since we're or we're going to transition to sacraments this year, mm -hmm. I'm focused on sacraments uh, for my YouTube channel. And so besides communion, obviously, we can talk about communion because it is the source and summit of our Christian life. Um, what else or what is your favorite sacrament and why? Uh, also a phenomenal question and a great one. And I could talk about this for, for hours, but I won't. I'll try to hone in on it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, let me let me clarify the question first though. Uh, yeah. Do you mean like me personally as just Raj, right? Or do or me as a priest celebrating the sacraments? Is, let's with, do both. Let's do okay, both. both. Okay, no, los dos. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, I think. Um, goodness. Um, <laughs> I mean, I I, I guess. I mean, yes, the Eucharist, I spent many hours before the Blessed Sacrament has always been an important um, part of my faith journey. Um, you know, for, for there's not, there's, I mean, there's something just so powerful about um, knowing uh, that, that God still has hope for you and believes in you. And so the Sacrament of Reconciliation is, um, oh. as much as I've, you know, I've, I've been, <laughs> I've been broken in my life or I've done things I didn't, I wasn't proud of or messed up to recognize that God still looks, looks us, looks at us in the sacrament and, and says, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You messed up in this way. You've made some bad choices, but, but I love you anyway. Mm. Uh, it's always been, um, it's always been there for me, right? As, as the sacraments are the reason that God, that, that Christ institutes them is so that we can have access to him and, and his grace. And, and I, no joke at the very, very important moments of my life, like I, I would have priests um, be available for confession, right? And so like, or, or I'd be somewhere where I could go to confession or even when I think I wasn't gonna be able to, to get to confession, there was that something happened that made it, you know, a friend invited to go to, to church or, or was like, was going on a day retreat and asked if I wanted to come. And so then there was confessions there, right? So all these, yeah. like, so for me, um, yeah, uh, reconciliation. And uh, as a priest, I still, I still, you know, I go often, um, you know, <laughs> I try and get, it's harder when you're up in, in, you know, I'm up here in the North and yeah. there's less priests and less religious up here. Yeah. And so, to, to, but I still try and see my spiritual director pretty regularly. So, um, uh, so there's the answer to that question. Um, <laughs> You know, celebrating celebrating the sacraments as a priest. I mean, they're all privileged, right? They're all yeah. amazing to be able to uh, enter into to folks' lives, families' lives, and in, in these moments, and be used as an instrument of love and mercy. It's it's um, it, I don't have words, right, it, to explain how amazing it is to just be used by God in that way. Mm. Um, I could I could speak about the great the great joy of um, celebrating. Uh, um, um, reconciliation like I was just talking about like so to flip that like yeah. I, it means I know like uh, um, 
yeah, so there's there's a great joy about that. Um, I, but you know what? The one that just pops into my head, uh, celebrating Mass, phenomenal. Celebrating mm. mercy of, of, of uh, God through reconciliation, phenomenal. But the one that just popped in my head, and maybe it's because I've been doing a lot of marriage prep lately and, and whatnot, but but yeah, you know, it's it's. Um, I know some priests who whose thought is like, um, they love the sacrament, but they, 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 in celebrating the, the celebration part of it, <laughs> right. they, um, some priests, uh, I think they, they it's lower on their list <laughs> okay. their weddings, just because okay. sometimes you have to deal with, with, um, lots of requests from the bride. Maybe, mm. if, you know, I don't know if anybody's seen the, the TV show Bridezilla's, <laughs> um, but so there's a lot of pressure there. Um, but, um, but, you know, I, I think it's incredibly beautiful. And for me, the preparation part of it, getting to work mm. with couples is just, I, I, um, I'm, I'm moved by, you know, the different stories of love, of, of a desire to love um, one another. And, um, and then to be able to be invited in that way to help nourish um, maybe things that need to be nourished in, in, in couples vision of love or mm. or to be able to kind of give them something new or a different perspective and show them you know um, how their love is relatable to god's love all mm. of that is great and then 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 all and then all that plays out in the sacrament how yes. we celebrate the sacrament <laughs> and all the signs and symbols of of um the wedding uh ritual so yeah um they're all great i don't have a favorite <laughs> do you think there's a has there been an increase or decrease in wedding prep or just getting married in a church um for yeah so so country. yeah um i think it varies from parish to parish right you'll see mm. that you know it's obviously in, in places where you're having when where um you're where you have good young adult groups and and um, young people are still coming to church then yeah. you're gonna have more more weddings if you if you're closer to college campuses those kind of things <laughs> yeah. can make a difference um uh also if you have a a long aisle in your church because oh, brides really? like to to pick the churches with long aisles that's funny um so uh <laughs> that's that's a joke but it's it's also true um okay. but so but in general i think over the years um i mean looking at the statistics um yeah sadly uh numbers for marriage are going down mm. right and it's not just for the church not just for the catholic yeah. church it's just in general it's just uh and you know, young people, we can ask all the questions of why, right? Yeah, young right. people and young people and commitment, young mm. people and their vision of what love is, right? Like, so, um, but um, that's on one end of the th of things. But for me, like, I think where marriage prep is as like programs nowadays and parishes yeah. and, um, and, you know, the, the engaging and journeying with couples, I think it's vastly improved uh, for okay. the most part in most places, right? So like yeah. that's increased, like what we do with couples, like how we prep them, mm. how we journey with them and how we, um, you know, try to, to give them the tools and um, the, the tools that'll help them in their marriage in the future. I think um, where maybe that was lacking in the past because we just kind of Oh. Push people yeah. through yeah. like now I think the programs in most dioceses are, are doing some amazing things with couples so you know awesome. good and yeah. good and bad, good and bad. You know, <laughs> yeah. but, but um so yeah if you're if you're listening to this you know <laughs> and and you've been dating your your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend for, for, for a long time <laughs> consider getting married discern um, discern, discern, marriage. Yeah. Yeah, discern. Yes. um awesome. yeah just like uh just a note um working at St. Catherine as a secretary yeah. we've been getting a lot of more calls for That's good. Uh, you know for marriage prep so I don't know if it's like the whole COVID thing or they just realize they need you know the sacrament but I yeah it's an awesome thing to see I actually uh, but, just I just yeah. told a couple yesterday to call you I'm no joke really? I just literally I was just, I think I have an idea who yeah, but yes yeah. but I was like okay call them as soon as possible call St. Catherine's as soon as possible but anyway that's um, funny all right yeah. well I'll look forward to that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, uh, going on to the next question, uh, what is something that you wish people knew about priests? Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot, right? Um, but I think there's the, a lot. The, I think probably the most helpful thing and what might be the most fruitful is mm. is um, I, I would hope that that folks know everyone right so you know people's church experiences is, is all different um some are really involved some are not as involved some just right. come uh to sunday mass and all they see is as the priest you know for an hour at a time um but i think i think probably one of the most fruitful things to share is that is that we're all different and we're all unique yes. uh, all of us priests and um but you know trust trust the holy spirit in the fact that you know the priest that you have right now 
in your parish or the one that that is helping you with marriage prep or the one that's mm-hmm. coming to bless your house or whatever <laughs> yeah. that there that um that the holy spirit has has um place that priest in that parish or in your life for a reason right and and they may not be the one you want or they, 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 their personalities might be slightly different or right. you, you know I think sometimes we get in I, you know so I was a lay person in the church before I became a priest and <laughs> and I did this too so I, I know sometimes we compare one priest to another priest and like you know why why, why couldn't you do it this way or why doesn't this mm-hmm. priest do that and but you know all of our personalities are different yeah. and we all have different journeys and so um, I'm not saying don't demand um, excellence out of your priest. No, we mm. you sh- we should, right? We should we should you should have a, a desire that your priest be better. But but don't just like say oh, I wish he was better, and then <laughs> yeah, not okay. and then not uh, help them, right? If you think like for instance, if you think that your priest could do better at um, at youth ministry, then invite mm. them to youth ministry things or help yeah. them, right? Like help them understand what the young okay. people are going through. Or if, if you feel like um, um, your, your priest doesn't speak, um, you know, it, it's hard to understand your priest mm. for whatever reason, maybe you can help with that with, you know, you know, start up a campaign to get a better sound system, whatever it is, right? Right, right, right. right. Like, or, or any other ways that you can understand, you know. So that my point is, is like, we're not, we don't go through the seminary and then we're perfect priests or yeah, perfect right. priests we we still have our own faults right and we we have our own personalities and um and i think sometimes not all the time people are really generous and really kind and, and yeah. at the parish and and really understanding but the, but sometimes every now and again folks are like well why is why did we get this priest or why didn't mm. we get that priest and and i would say just trust that trust in the holy spirit and if you really want a greater selection of priests and encourage more young, young men to enter the seminary <laughs> nice. right so yes. um, so you know and, and that's another part of it right that some dioceses um just uh, we, we don't have where whereas you know you before you could have had three priests at a parish and then mm. you know some families like this priest and some families like that priest and and you can connect with their priests on different levels now just because of that like because of the vocation shortage it's it's harder to um to engage with priests in, in that way so okay so i mean that I, that was a couple of different things wrapped into one yeah, yeah, of what i'd like people to know about priests no. but priests are people too is the there bottom line priests yes. are people too <laughs> Um, I eat, I do laundry, I do, right? like, it's so funny, yes. whenever I go to the grocery store in clerics, or out of clerics sometimes, yeah. but the, the students, like, 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 uh, in my other assignments where, where um, I had the schools, yeah. like, I would show up at the grocery store, and then they'd be like, <gasps> you eat? <laughs> right like you shop like, or like i'll have like yeah. the funniest things or like when i'm like pushing my um like cart and like i've got like three boxes of cereal yeah and then like they're like sometimes you know i like cereal so so like maybe it's like captain crunch in there and, yeah. then, and then the kid is like mom father got captain crunch why can't i get <laughs> captain crunch and i'm like uh sorry I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh that's awesome uh, oh. But yeah, no, yeah, priests are people too. Maybe that's the, the shortest version of, of what I was trying to say. Okay. Um, and then this question is not on here, but what is one surprising thing that, um, or maybe you didn't expect or you didn't know um, coming into the priesthood, I guess? Yeah. Um, I'll share two things to that okay. question. Okay. Um, the first thing I'll say is, you know, on, on my faith journey, I, I definitely saw times that God provided for me, right? Mm. That He would provide along the way on, on my on the faith journey. But definitely, as a priest, that that that's hit home so much. Like, I, I can see it in so many ways, and maybe it's because I I have the opportunity to pray more and reflect more, even though it's super busy and I don't, you know, fitting in prayer is 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 um, a challenge. But mm. but uh, you know. Um, in doing that, in those opportunities to reflect more, I can see more clearly, like on a, even on a daily basis, how God is providing, right? And, um, and it's in, in, you know, in surprising and unique ways, like, (laughs) you know, if I'm, if I'm uh, feeling, you know, if, if I'm feeling low on some kind of emotional thing, you know, something will happen that, that, um, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I, honestly, this this happened. This has happened so many times that that it's just it's kind of silly now. But um, 
I remember like days when I was just like, man, like, I, like the, the thought of like, man, I wish I really had a family, you know, and there were like, you know, those thoughts of like, you know, I, I wish, you know, what if, what if, what if things were different and I, mm. and I didn't finish the seminary and I, and I got married and I had a family. And so I have, I have this longing that yeah. like, is just in my mind in a reflection or whatever, right. like, um, but then like, then like somebody from the school comes over and like drops off a card, a pack of like cards from the <laughs> second grade class Aww, or the yeah. DRE drops off a, you know, set of things from the first communion prep. Mm. And they're like, father, we love you. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh my okay, gosh, okay. Like, okay, I am a father. I do have a family. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no. So um, that's a, uh, that's one thing that God just continues to provide mm-hmm. and, and, um, in shockingly and beautiful ways. Um, the other thing that I was going to say is that, that, um, you know, in the seminary, they don't prep us for this and it's not, it's not the seminary's fault. It's just, it's just mm-hmm. tough is, um, you know, there is like this emotional drain of, okay. of having to be all things to all people. Mm-hmm. And, okay. um, and like so literally it's not not right now during covid but like um in uh, on you know in before covid you priests you probably remember hopefully you all remember what mass was like before covid right. um, but <laughs> priests would like you know greet people after at, yeah. after mass right and so you're standing there and like literally you could go from like oh father we just had a baby can you bless bless our baby <laughs> yeah to like somebody saying father i just found out i had you know um, i'm in stage four cancer mm-hmm. and like the emotional like pivot there is yeah. it's like it takes its toll it's exhausting mm-hmm. and then, then you get somebody who's yelling at you because the bathrooms aren't clean or and then you get somebody who's <laughs> who's like um father i liked your homily but you know like yeah right no, i mean i mean but like the emotional range like they mm-hmm. don't prepare you for that but it does and then but it makes it real like those you know those gospel passages where they're like people are pulling on jesus and people are um you know pressing in on him and um but if but but to be used in that way is is amazing and marvelous Mm -hmm. and to be exhausted because of it then okay so be it it's beautiful Uh, i I say that now easily from from this pod uh, from this uh, you know youtube video i can say that easily i gotta remind myself that in those moments (laughs) but anyway okay um, and then the last question is, what is the best thing about being a priest? Yeah, um, I, I would say um, just the honest, like the realness of being with people where they are um, mm. and meeting, you know, in the joy, similar to what I just said, what was exhausting, but like being invited to people's into people's lives and like incredibly joyous moments, Mm -hmm. being able to bless a new home, cars, those kind of things, um, celebrate weddings and all that stuff. (laughs) And then also, um, you know, the, the privilege that it is to journey with folks when they're grieving Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, being in the confessional, even when I'm tired and then somebody walks in who hasn't, who hasn't been in confession for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years or whatever. And like, um, to say, okay, you know, I was tired, but this is why I was sitting in the chair, right? Mm. Like, and so to be, um, that's the best part of it, that, that constantly being used by God um, is is such a blessing. Ah, oh, that's so nice to hear. I love it. Um, you thank go. you, Father Raj, for your time. Um, I really hope that you guys learned a lot. Um, I know I did. <laughs> um, I can only imagine what it's like to be a priest, but yeah, thank you for sharing that insight. Um, and I hope that, like you said, that uh, people can realize that priests are people too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was amazing to hear. Um, Father, do you have um, anything you would like to share um, with my YouTube? Yeah. So to- totally. I mean, stuff? yeah. If you want to get a hold of me, if there's anything I said today that you have a question about or whatnot, you can um, find me on Instagram, uh, Rev Raj D. That's R E V. Plug it in here. <laughs> R A J D. Yeah. Um, is that my handle? I, 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 I just blanked. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, yes. Anyway, um, uh, you can, and then I'm involved in with a, a bunch of other things, and you can just kind of get if you follow me there, you can see <laughs> all the different you know things. I, I've been like on a, a bit of a social media break, but I'm I'm kind of back. I don't know, but um, um, I'm, I'm on Facebook, but like I'm like never on Facebook, right? Like so, okay. don't try and find me there or message me there. But so Instagram is easiest, and then okay. you know you, it can connect you with. Um, a lot of the awesome things that we're doing um, uh, that, you know, things I'm connected with collaborating with folks. So like I got a podcast with my good friend, nice. Cecilia on food and faith. Um, uh, I, I, I help out with a, um, 
online kind of fellowship uh, event, Koinonia yes. Cup, take, take quiz, <laughs> trivia. Um, so you can check me out there. I host with with John Paul Mapa, the great <laughs> John Paul Mapa. Uh, so we have a fun time and you can win prizes and stuff. Sarah Max been on there, competed. Yes. All that stuff. Um, so um, all that and then doing different things for the diocese and whatnot. So yeah, fun stuff. So um, good. Yeah. That, Thank I guess you that, so I guess much. <laughs> yeah, Rev Rajdi, find it yes, all there or whatever. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I will post it there on the link. You know how that is. Um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Father Raj. Mm -hmm. I am going to stop recording this.